So um, we were working on a, a click and point uh, style movement. Now we will be adding a new hero um, to it. So it will have animations and stuff. So first of all, what we need to do is just download Unity to our computer and uh, you can buy assets from Asset Store, but there are tons of free assets too. For example, if you just look up for RPG character, I'm pretty sure you can find something that is free. Let me show you how you can actually find free products. Oh, as you can see, yes. And as you can see, there are tons of um, um, heroes. For, uh, for 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 this prototype that I'm going to that I will be designing, uh, I want to use this hero because it looks cool. Okay, anyway, so uh, you basically op open the open a, an, an empty project on Unity, then go to the asset store, and then go to the uh, pack package manager, and then find your asset and click download, download, and it will download the asset. And it will basically put the asset to your assets folder. And um, so once it's download the asset, click import because it's basically you need to import um, the um, the asset to your um, <clears throat> project. Anyways, here's the mesh model. So this is an FBX uh, file. Uh, we will probably um, see uh, now um, we will uh, move uh, transfer this model to play canvas in order to do that just uh, go to the play canvas project and create a folder called models and then if you're on mac you can basically reveal like uh, find a folder like this on windows it's uh, it should be similar you can basically jump to the folder the uh, model folder and once you do that, just uh, basically drag and drop the FBX file to your project. It will basically upload the whole model um, to, to your project. Um, once it's done, I'm going to design the uh, animation flow of this for this hero. Then I'm going to uh, add some scripting to it. So when I, when I click on, on C, it will basically run to that point and stop when it's just, um, yes, as you can see, it basically um, imported all the animations to an, an, an model, and also it has a material. But right now, as you can see, it basically important, uh, imported the uh, model in a template. And I don't want that because there are some issues with the mod, uh, model system of Play Canvas. So what I'm going to do is basically delete all of these um, assets. Um, and I'm going to change one setting so it doesn't import the hierarchy of the um, models. Because we want to use the legacy model uh, uh, component. Now click the settings and go to the assets, asset tasks. And here, uh, you need to disable that one because it basically um, imports the hierarchy too, and we don't want that. Right now, it's going to import the uh, file again. This is important because otherwise, um, the, new, uh, the new model render component has some bugs. You, you wouldn't want to deal with those bugs. Right now, you can go with legacy. And um, as you can see, this is render component. Um, we gonna we will be adding model the legacy one, right? So um, we basically have all the uh, files right now. What I'm going to do is basically drag and drop the model into the origin, and I'm gonna delete box and capsule because I don't need them anymore. And as you can see right now, I have my model. It basically looks to the direction and, you know, um, but it needs animations, obviously. Um, let me just make it like this so it's bigger than, um, yes. So now what I'm going to do is go to the root folder and create a folder called animations, right? And I'm gonna, I will create a state graph. So state graph is designed for animation flows 
and uh, you can basically design different um, animation sequences in with a uh, graph uh, play canvas's new feature. So I'm gonna call this uh, hero and open the editor. So initially I need an idle animation, then I need some sort of walk uh, or like we can call this run animation. So what I need to do is basically, um, I'm gonna define a condition for this system. So um, if, um, so if, um, if a distance or uh, we can we can call this speed if our speed is uh, greater than some sort of value we will basically switch to run and here I, I basically added a transition between idle and run and I also added parameter here like this now click on this and add a, add a condition for for uh, this flow right so you can basically say if the distance is, or speed is greater than this amount of number, it will basically switch to run, right? And uh, if, if it's, um, you can add another transition uh, um, to run, run to uh, idle, and you can also define this too. If speed is uh, less, um, less than a certain number like this, um, it will basically stop or just go to the idle animation, right? So let's just test it out, test this out, right? So um, I'm gonna add a component for animation. Uh, for animation flows, I'm not going to use legacy one, I'm gonna use the new one. And um, once you do that, you can basically drag and drop your uh, state graph like, like this. And then I'm gonna basically, I will uh, drag and drop some animations, right? So I wonder if this has some sort of idle animation. No. Oh yeah, stand. And I also need some sort of run. Let's just select that one too. And now, um, let me refresh the page. It should uh, stay on idle. As you can see, it stays on idle right now. So. So right now I'm gonna, I will add a script and basically what I need to do, I just need to send this uh, current distance information to this uh, animation component so it can set um, some uh, state state um, for animations, right? So let me just create an attribute for our Hero mesh. Let's just call this um, character entity because we want to communicate with this entity. Like here, this is the character model, right? And this is our player. Let's just parse the script again. Drag and drop this character here. Now we have this. What we can do is basically um, there are so, uh, some functions that you can use in scripting area for. A graph editor. I'm gonna show you those systems right now. So I have this uh, char uh, character entity. What I can do is basically I can set boolean, float number, integer, set trigger, and stuff like that. And they're the parameters, right? So in this case, this this is a float number. What I'm going to do is basically set a float number called speed. And I will basically give the distance um, of my um, character. Actually, let's just make this distance so it makes more sense because we're not sending speed. Let me check those. Things. Yeah, they're updated too. So let's see. Uh, let's see if that works. So as you can see, it just runs, but it like doesn't uh, do the thing because run animation should be loop right um, right now um, it also goes to position and runs to there but it doesn't stop the animation it's because um, we, we check this distance and it's probably if it's uh, less than zero we are not setting this float number 
what we can do is basically drag and drop to the outside of the um, condition it should work right so as you can see it just runs to that direction and it basically stops there this is what I want for now uh, so um, if I want to change the speed of it I can obviously change the speed here like this for example if I make it to it will basically run faster what I, I don't want that right now one seems okay to me so um, let's just call this part two and we can we can add skills and stuff like that to this hero later